Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Ah, uh, yeah, it's Monday night once again, and here I am, Grimnir, with the show Grim Leftovers. This is the second of these shows, and I'm glad to have you all here tuned in this evening with me to see where we're going to go on this particular evening. For those of you not familiar with the Grim Leftovers show, let me just tell you what I, what I say about it. Uh, it's it's just um, old news stories that I didn't have time to get to on the Freaker's Ball. I try I try to bring some back around and, and get them here to you. And uh, we'll see how that goes on this second airing of the Grim Leftovers program. So welcome to everybody here on reallibertymedia.com or any of the other places we may be broadcasting, which could be Spreaker. That's right, we are on Spreaker. And on freedomsnetwork.com and on realliberty.org. And uh, if you got the tweets and you, and you tuned in from somewhere, welcome to y'all out there. If you're on minds.com, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Jump on into the chat and uh, you'll have a good old time over here. Let me tell you that. So, uh, anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Let's just get right on into this, shall we? <laughs> Oh, boy, I'm trying to do things a little bit different uh, to, to get, make a little smoother flow as we go along here. Anyway, so uh, the first story comes from PJMedia.com from October 17th of this year. And it's titled, Thanks, Common Core. ACT scores for the class of 2018, worst in decades. Yes, indeedy. The creators of the ACT test announced on Wednesday that scores for the class of 2018 are the worst reported in decades. Math scores, in fact, are in free fall among the ACT uh, tested U.S. high school graduates, falling to their lowest mark in 14 years. To the, uh, according to the Condition of College Career Readiness 2018, the ACT's annual report, uh, the report includes ACT tests from all 50 states and the District of Columbia. The percentage of ACT tests graduates who met or surpassed the ACT college readiness benchmark in math, suggesting they are ready to succeed in a first-year college algebra class, fell to its lowest since 2004. The report declared with only 40% of 2018 graduates meeting the benchmark, down from a high of 46% in 2012. The average ACT's, uh, ACT math test dropped to its lowest level in 20 years, 20.5 20 on a scale of 1 to 36. American students scored 21.1% in 2012 and 207 last year. Are, do you have kids at all? Any of y'all have kids out there? Are, are, you, are you sending those kids to public schools, which Anytime, basically, and let, and let me just state this clearly and, and uh, uh, without question here. If you hear the word public being used, you can supplement, so, uh, not supplement, <laughs> replace the word public with government. So when it says a public school, it means a government school. And what do they do in government schools? They indoctrinate you. Yes, indeed. They want you to believe that government is a necessary thing that you need to have hanging around your neck to drag you down, to brainwash you, to convince you to be a good worker, a good soldier, a good voter, a good citizen. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, if you got kids and, and, they're, and they're in one of these government schools, if you could find a way to uh, do it yourself at home or in a, in a community group, that's separate from any of the government indoctrination, and then do some serious unschooling on them, you will have a much, much better uh, chance with that child coming out and being a successful person, not brainwashed, and, and also they'll be a free thinker. They'll be able to, to be able to come up with ideas on their own. Yeah, so that's, that's just something that you might want to consider 
if you do have children because if they're in one of those schools first off they're not learning anything anymore and uh, maybe at some point uh, they learn something but uh, at this point in time all they're getting is, is just the pure propaganda uh, teaching them how to be sensitive to everybody's whatever <laughs> It's it's nonsense. I don't, I don't know how any any uh, uh, buddy could could keep sending their kids there. I understand it's very difficult, especially since uh, everything costs so much now, and you make so little money, and you you got to have two parents working at least in order to to, to get your you know cert, your kids and your family uh, through life. Uh, but if you could find a way, find a way. That's all I'm saying on that. So uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever, it just just let it be known that uh, whatever your kids are learning, if they are in a government school, uh, you might want to every evening, whenever you got time, sit them down. I know you're tired from work, but sit them down and, and try and uh, find out what they picked up during the day and, and straighten them out on that. Uh, relieve them of the propaganda that they've been fed, and also educate them about the proper ways of doing whatever it may be, math science, uh, English, any of those kind of things, if you have the knowledge. If not, somebody in your community does, somebody in your group of friends does that could help out. Uh, just saying, just saying, that's not the kind of thing you want to have going on with your children if you have children. All right, moving on. Story number two. <laughs> hey, look at that uh, thing there. Bar man. Yay, I love leftovers. Oh, oh that was Grammy. Grammy tweet, Grammy tweet. <laughs> oh, let me say hi to the folks over here in the RLM chat, by the way. Yeah, we got we got the Moose Girl and Kate and Anton and Asmo and Calcedoni, uh, Chloe, uh, Graham Z and Don C and Meester Brow and Ponder Gander, who's going to be doing his new show coming up at the beginning of next year. Uh, and it's going to be called uh, Re Writing, Writing Blog, Reading Blog, uh, something like that. Uh, I'm sure he'll instruct me on that. Then we got the Poxified and Miss Rain and uh, Rob Works out there in Rome's and uh, Vin E, who is the Ponder Gander by himself, by another name, by any other name. And uh, Phantom and Beetle and Cyborg and Noodle. Uh, Dakota and Frumpy and Gromit and Java Doctor and JJ's Kozu and Moe and Motley, Motley Alaska in there. Uh, Nenson de Bois, Poxified Home and... Um, who did I miss up here? I thought I missed somebody. Maybe not. And we got Sock Puppet and the Skittle Bot. And we got a dead duck here in the chat. All right. <laughs> Moving on, as I said. This story from October 29th of this year. Unpatched Microsoft Word flaw could allow hackers to infect your computer. Imagine that. Imagine that. Let me share my little bit from this that I have up here. Uh, cybersecurity researchers have revealed an unpatched logical flaw in Microsoft 2016 and older versions that could allow an attacker to embed malicious code inside of a document file, tricking users into running malware on their computers. Apparently, Microsoft has no plans to fix the issue, and says its software is properly interpreting HTML as designed, which may or may not be true. Uh, radio Writing Series, uh, Vinny says, is the, the name of that new program that we can expect to come up at the beginning of the year. So, anyway, this uh, here, discovered by researchers at Simulate, Simulate? I don't know. Uh, the bug abuses the online video option in Word documents a feature that allows users to embed an online video with a link to a YouTube as shown. It's shown here in the article. The, the links will be in the, in the post-show blog. Uh, anyway, uh, when, it, when a user adds an online video to an MS Word document, the online video feature automatically generates an HTML embed script, which is executed when the thumbnail inside the document is clicked by the viewer. Researchers decided to go public with their findings three months after Microsoft refused to acknowledge 
the report issued <laughs> as as a security vulnerability. Since Word doc files are actually zip packages of its media and the configuration files can easily be opened and edited, according to researchers, the configuration file called document XML, which is XML file, uh, default XML file used by Word, and contains generated and embedded video code, can be edited to replace the current video uh, iframe with code with any HTML or JavaScript code that would run in the background. Uh, what that means to you is if somebody can uh, write a script, and they can, to go in there and modify the default XML file, the document.xml file, which is very easily done, uh, at, at that that point they can tell that thing to do anything you, it, they want it to. So when a user clicks that little that little icon expecting a video to open, what's going to happen is that malicious code is going to run on your machine and then you'll be hosed for certain. So uh, anyway, if you want to know about Microsoft and malware, they're pretty much synonymous. <laughs> pretty much all Microsoft products are, are indeed malware. Uh, adware, virusware, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they got they got various many names, uh, but it, what it, what it comes down to is uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, Vinny, I said easily. Um, what it comes down to is is that um, Microsoft loves spying on you, uh, and and they love controlling what you're doing on your machine, and they want to keep you using their products, and trying to tell you that one of their products is flawed in some way is not to their benefit. So they're not going to tell you that because it may actually not be a flaw. It may be that way by design. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and yes, they do work directly with the CIA and the NSA to report back on you anything that you may have done because they do track everything you do, especially with the newer operating systems like Windows 10. Now, Vinny is asking me to do something here in the chat. Now, if, if anybody out there listening that's not here in the chat, you, you don't realize, but we have an active chat over here, and people in there talk back to me. I, I was going to try to ignore people in the chat for the, for this particular program, but it, it's kind of maybe a little bit easier uh, to, to see what they got to say. Um, and by the way, anytime somebody says when something is easily done upon uh, on their shows here on RLM Radio, uh, Vincent gets all excited his last name is Easley. <laughs> and he wants me to add our log campaign uh, to my to my broadcast. Uh, all right, I'll I'll add our log uh, for for what it's worth into my into my blog. Not that it'll actually reflect anything. Usually tags should reflect some of the content. Uh, and since I don't have anything that refers to our log in my content. Uh, that, may, that may be a little misplaced, but I'll go ahead and add it. Not, not a big deal. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, in the first story, we talked about pe pe people with kids, that are children, youngins that are in school, in government schools, um, and, and, and what the government does to them. Well, now, they may not require you anymore. They may not need you to go ahead and have those babies because apparently they figured out a way to make babies, create embryos, human embryos, with no egg and no sperm. That's right. <laughs> this article from uh, NewScientist.com on April 11th of this year. This one's going way back, all the way back in April. All right. Artificial wombs and embryos made from skin cells. Remarkable new techniques could revolutionize pro reproductive biology and help bring an end to infertility. And then, yeah, like I said, you won't have to worry about all that problem, having kids, bringing them up. The government will just bring them up, and then they'll be perfect little clones for the government for whatever means or needs they have, whether it be workers or, or uh, fresh, fresh... Uh, soldiers, those kind of things. 
Molly Alaskan points out that whoever created Common Core should be in jail. I, I cannot I cannot disagree with that. I cannot disagree with that whatsoever. I mean, let me tell people I'm online here because sometimes people miss the uh, messages that that I'm here and I'm talking and I'm yammering on about whatever. Um, but here I am. Anyway, um, you I guess this is a Chinese name I guess or, or some some Asian name. Yu Xiao wasn't trying to create an embryo, but a few years ago, working in a lab at the University of Michigan, he witnessed something mind-boggling. The cells he was working on, uh, or working with, seemed to assemble themselves into what looked like just early-stage human. He was just working with cells, and they formed themselves into an early-stage human. We were looking for something else, said Xiao, a bioengineer now at the MIT, uh, but serendipity hit. The idea is that scientists could create the first steps towards human life is astonishing. But Xiao's discovery wasn't the first. A year before he published his results in 2017, research by a team in Japan led to the birth of a live mouse uh, using eggs from the, the, the team made from adult skin cells. So they made eggs out of adult skin cells and then they were uh, able to to be born born? What, 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 what word would I use there? They were able to, to bring these eggs to fruition and, and have uh, little, little mice, little live mice. Um, anyway, discoveries like these are bringing us closer to solving some of the most intractable problems in reproductive biology and medicine. Uh, by recreating the first days of development in the lab, researchers are breaking down or breaking open the black box of early pregnancy, a poorly understood and fragile time at which most miscarriages happen and fertility treatments fail. Now, I'm not saying, I won't stand out here and stay, sit, sit here and say that people shouldn't if they really, really, really want to have a baby and have one of their own and not go in, out there and adopt one of the billions of baby, well, probably not billions, millions, ma many millions of babies uh, that are uh, needing to be adopted uh, rather than creating one from their own seed. If you really, really feel that need for reproduction of yourself and your other, uh, then, then these things are out there. But for them to be creating these in a lab, producing these youngins in that manner, I, I just I feel it's wrong. I don't I don't I, I don't like the concept of it. Uh, if if people were supposed to have babies, they'd be able to have babies, and uh, those that can't, then then maybe you want to look a different direction. You weren't supposed to have a baby, so um, I, I <laughs> it's disturbing to me because you all know what happens. When, when when government starts putting their fingers into things and it never comes out nice it never works out well um, so there, there's going to be some serious atrocities going on if if by if they are able to uh, create humans without without egg and or sperm um, there's, there's going to be some serious bad stuff going on, and you're not going to hear about it. It's going to be done in these secret dirty labs, and suddenly they'll have a, a, a new flock of soldiers that are grown to their specifications. Or uh, it, it's it's bad news. It's it's just it's just overall bad news. So I I, I don't I don't really know what else I could say about it, but um, I'm against it. I, I I like technology. I love technology. I just don't like what's done with it uh, after it's created, uh, and, that, and that can go for anything, uh, any any technological advances, uh, because because the evil people, whether you want to consider that the government or the global banksters or whoever, evil people get to get their their hooks into this, this technology, and they do bad things with it, and we, it's just bad. <laughs> Let me just leave it at that. <laughs> now I have a story here from November first, uh, but before uh, I give you much of the story, I'll give you the headline. 
Uh, Janet Yellen throws shade as Bitcoin turns 10 years old. Today, the, the 17th of December, 2018, is the one-year anniversary of Bitcoin's peak as far as its value versus cur the fiat currencies, the dollars and other fiat currencies around the world. So one year ago today, Bitcoin was sitting at nearly $20,000, very nearly. And today it's at about $3,500, um, which is actually an improvement over like the past few days. But uh, so if you uh, invested heavily in Bitcoin at $20,000, I, I feel really sorry for you. But uh, I, I think you should just uh, hold on, hodl, hodl. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Rome's is talking about how they, the uh, how they discovered that embryos were creating themselves by accident. Uh, yeah, I guess it is neat, but and and it, it's something interesting. I, I I just have high concern going forward uh, with with uh, what they do. They have bad intentions, and they do things badly. So uh, yeah. Anyway, back to my my new story here. <laughs> um, cryptocur <laughs> cryptocurrencies have no place in the global economy as the legitimate unit of money, according to Janet Yellen, former chief of the Federal Reserve. I'm not a fan of the Bitcoin. Let me tell you why, Yellen told an audience during a live panel at the 2018 Canada FinTech Forum in Montreal, Yellen, and get, and get this, and get, get this here, get this, Yellen said that cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin lack the necessary characteristics typical of fiat money. So what she said and what she believes is that unless it's fiat money or has the characteristics of fiat money, meaning it can be created at will by a certain source that controls the money supply, then it doesn't really count as a money, as a currency, as, a, as something of value. If it's, can, if it's not centrally controlled and created out of thin air, then it's not doesn't have any value. This is what these people... The Federal Reserve and the rest of the global banksters actually and truly believe. They think <laughs> that anything that's not within their control is worthless. Going on. It has long been thought that for something to be a useful currency, it needs to be a stable source of value. And Bitcoin is anything but. So you people in the in the Federal Reserve creating trillions of, of dollars out of nothing to feed the companies that are failing and dropping the value of that currency overall of how much you, your purchasing power for each single dollar is by a significant amount that's stable that's what you're telling me here Janet that if you can create it and, 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 and control the value of it by increasing the supply, that's stable. But something like a Bitcoin, where there's only a certain amount that are ever going to be produced, and they can only be produced at a certain rate, uh, using a certain methodology that, that, that costs a lot to generate each one, that's of no value. But your stuff that you print, and I'm not even going to say in paper, because they do it all electronically. There's no, and all they do is got to press a few buttons, bing, bam, boom, and in a couple of seconds, there's suddenly an extra trillion, three trillion, ten trillion, twenty trillion dollars that reduces the value of every other dollar that's already been out there. But they control it. So to them, that's value. To the rest of the world, it's, hey, I just got screwed, and I didn't even notice it. I had $40 in my pocket, and I was able to go and fill up my gas tank in my car. But now I got $40 in my pocket, and I can only get a half a tank of gas. Oh, that's stable. <laughs> 
Oh, boy. She says, it's not used for a lot of transactions. It's not a stable source of value. Well, the reason it's not used for a lot of transactions is, is government doesn't want it to be. So anybody that starts trying to use Bitcoin for various things or other cryptocurrencies for various things gets their head pounded in by the government. <laughs> they don't want somebody else playing their game. It's their game. Don't you get it? Anyway, Yellen's comments were made on the eve of Bitcoin's 10-year anniversary, October 31st, 2008, uh, which marks the day the first Bitcoin white paper was published by somebody supposedly named Satoshi Nakamoto, a pseudonym whose real identity has never been identified. Uh, the paper outlined the use of a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash that would allow on my online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution, which formed the basis of the blockchain integration in the economy. Since its inception, Bitcoin has been one of the fastest growing and most volatile in investment, uh, investable assets. It's not supposed to be an investable asset. It's supposed to be a currency. So if you look at it as an investable asset, then, then I can understand a little bit where you're coming from, but you're still full of crap. Uh, anyway, I, as far as it not being used a lot of places, I've used it to buy all kinds of things. Not Bitcoin per se, uh, but other cryptocurrencies that I use, which then again, I do have to exchange to a Bitcoin format in order to use. But I've paid for hosting services and domain services, and I've bought electronics off of various places on the Internet. Um... Uh, there's there's a, there's a lot of uses. There's a lot, a lot of places that will accept not only Bitcoin but other cryptocurrencies out there. So um, well, what she's saying and what she believes, and I and I do believe she truly believes these kind of things, uh, and I do believe all of them do, all of the banksters. And even if they don't believe it, because a lot of them are, are really trying to adopt the uh, the blockchain technology in some manner or another. Uh, but through their still through their own centrally controlled system and still finding a way where they can create as much of whatever currency they want to create at any particular time as they want to and then i guess they could also decrease the uh, amount by just burning some uh, some of those blocks out which if you're not familiar with that they, that's it's something that's commonly done uh, in the cryptocurrency world <laughs> They'll just, people that, uh, coins that have not been accepted or are not uh, currently being used in, in somebody's uh, wallet or anywhere else, uh, they'll, they'll burn those coins. Um, or, or if they do, especially if they do a fork, uh, a hard fork to another version of the coin and they give a certain amount of time for you to convert your coins to the new version and all those people that didn't convert, uh, those, those coins get burnt. So, uh, you can look at it as an investment. I know a lot of people look at cryptocurrencies as an investment. Um, I, I, I don't look at them really so much as an investment as I, I look at them as a, a, a way to, to spend, to buy, purchase things. It's, it's, it's a barter system like uh, uh, any other barter tool, any other item you may have that's, that's, uh, that you use for bartering. I missed something. I think I got them all so far. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's see where we're at here. Oh, we're on tech dirt now. Okay. Um, I love tech dirt for a number of reasons. It's not the perfect site, but it's a it's a cool site. And and the main reason that I love them is is their departments. Every time they post an article, uh, they'll put some kind of quirky little phrasing as, as a department. This particular one is from the I guess he's just on a roll department. <laughs> Alright. Government says accused CIA, and this is from da -da 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 -da, November 2nd of this year. Uh, government says accused CIA hacking tools leaker leaking even more classified info from behind bars. So what did he leak? He leaked CIA hacking tools, or he's accused 
of leaking CIA hacking tools. CIA hacking tools. Why does the CIA have hacking tools? They created these tools for themselves to hack into you and to hack into other people around the world. They want to hack. And they don't want you to know that they're hacking. But some guy, Joshua Schulte, leaked their hacking tools. And now other people have the same tools that they have, or they did at least back in October or whenever this initially came out. Because it came out a while ago and he's been in jail for a while and apparently now he's leaking more classified info from behind bars, uh, which they're not happy about. <laughs> So th is th is this what you're uh, what you what you're forking over your your parts of your life a good portion of your life a third of your life whatever it is however however much percent of your income the the government steals calling it taxes is that uh, is that, is that the kind of thing that you want them to be doing is creating hacking tools to come after you anyway the DOJ is still waiting. For accused Vault 7 leaker Joshua Schulte's trial to begin. But that's not stopping it from adding to the long list of charges he already faces. The former NSA CIA operative's house was raided last year by the feds who were looking for evidence of Schulte's leaking of CIA hacking tools to WikiLeaks. It found some that some of that, but also it found and here's a key thing, key thing. It also found 10,000 child porn images. Huh. Huh. How is it, how is it always that whoever the government's going after suddenly has all kinds of child porn on their hard drives? <laughs> Do you think maybe that might be planted? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's insanity. But anyway, and it says the child porn alone will likely see Schulte pulled away for a long time. That way, if they can't get him on, on leaking the hacking tools, they got him on the porn that they planted. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, leaking top secret tools isn't likely to be greeted with a wrist slap. Uh, not with the forever war on leakers still in progress. For some reason, the government felt compelled to add copyright infringement to the list of charges after discovering a few pieces of pirated content on Schulte's personal server. Oh, he's he's got a he's got a MP3 that he didn't pay for. Hey, we better get him on that. Yep, indeedy. <laughs> Schulte, who was locked up in a New York detention facility until he goes to trial, must figure he has nothing to lose. Or they're just planting all kinds of crap on him. That's one conclusion uh, that, that can be drawn from the latest set of charges brought by the DOJ. According to the new court documents filed on Wednesday, October 31st, U.S. prosecutors plan to file three new charges against Joshua Schulte, for allegedly leaking more classified data while in detention at the New York Metropolitan Correctional Facility Facility Center. Uh, well, let me ask you this. He's under your control. How is he leaking more classified data? Where is he getting more classified data to leak? And then, I, I mean, if you know the guy's a hacker, why are you giving him access to a computer? You have him in your control. <laughs> the filing uh, is quite the read. According to the allegations, Schulte had access to multiple smuggled cell phones and was using them to disseminate info to third parties. Smuggled cell phones. You can't keep smuggled cell phones out of your prison? Huh. It appears the info Schulte smuggled out of the prison, he smuggled it out, uh, uh, if that's the word you want to use, came from classified documents released to him as part of his pretrial discovery. So his pretrial stuff was classified, 
and he told people, hey, this is what I got uh, on, a, on a smuggled cell phone. All right. Now the DOJ has stripped him of access to classified documents, which, you know, you don't think that might have been a good thing to do ahead of time, supposing you're not lying. <laughs> If you know he's a leaker in the first place, you're going to hand him classified documents? <laughs> right. Oh, God. A flurry of pa paperwork and a search of Schulte's housing unit turned up a number of things, including a new form of encryption. And you know, if it's not their encryption, they hate it. If you encrypt something, they don't like that. If you put a password on something, they don't like that. Anyway, given the FBI's recent history, it probably should be a little more careful when it discusses encryption. A few years of going dark narrative was uh, upended by the agency itself, which revealed it could not competently count physical devices in its possession. It doesn't even know what it's got. The ever-inflating number of impenetrable devices was suddenly, and embarrassingly, converted to an asterisk <laughs> on multiple FBI DOJ web pages with footnotes stating that uh, updated number would not be provided I mean would be provided <laughs> at the agency's convenience which means never uh, anyway a <laughs> uh, little more here now, now there's this, the DOJ prosecutor relaying the FBI's message about significant encryption, whatever the hell that means, to the federal judge presiding over the case. What makes this particular encryption significant is not explained, but it does seem to make this encryption appear far more nefarious. It's encryption. Encryption is not nefarious than regular insignificant encryption used by citizens not currently under federal indictment. Now, that's the thing is, you, if you want to have a secret, that's a no-no. You're not allowed to have a secret. They, everything is secret. Everything is secret. And if you do actually find out something about something bad that they've been doing, which is pretty much everything they do is bad, uh, they, they have a policy, and it's called deny everything. Deny everything. That is the government's policy. They don't want you to know what they're up to, but they want to know every single thing that you are up to. Let me get a sip of water here real quick. All right, not a sip, a gulp. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> Let's go on to the next thing we have lined up here. From the Activist Post on November 2nd of this year. U.S. National Toxicology Program, NTP, research reveals cell phone radiation causes cancer. Yeah, I think we were aware of that. The FDA couldn't give a crap. It don't care one way or another. <laughs> uh, like I said, this is on Activist Post by B.N. Frank. Decades of research had already proven that exposure to all sources of cell phone and wireless Wi-Fi radiation was harmful way back in 2011 when the WHO, the World Health Organization, classified it as a possible carcinogen in the same category as engine exhaust, lead, and chloroform. At that time, many doctors and scientists said there was enough research proving that it should be classified instead of at least as a po probable, probable, not possible, probable carcinogen. But that didn't matter. Not one iota. Time marched on. And more research proved that the exposure to all sources of cell phone and wireless Wi-Fi radiation are harmful and in ways other than cancer risk. Yes, they are. 
yesterday, well, yesterday when this article was printed or released, uh, more results from the U.S. government-funded National Toxicology Program research on the cell phone radiation revealed that exposure definitely, there's not even probable anymore, it's definitely causes cancer. This was expected by many, including maybe insurance companies who don't cover wireless exposure risk anymore. Regardless, the FDA is not going to do one goddamn thing about it. And they list many ridiculous reasons why. Of course, the FDA is known for its many ridiculous decisions. One of the first was in 2015, approving of the sale of genetically modified salmon, GMO salmon, otherwise known as Frankenfish, without labeling despite minimal testing, which also raised red flags. That's right, they did a little testing on it, and that raised flags, and they said, meh, it's fine. Let that fish go out into the market. In fact, an online search quickly reveals all kinds of FDA bad decisions. FDA fails to protect Americans from dangerous drugs and unsafe foods. FDA blunders. There's a bunch of links here in this article that you, that you can take a look at. Uh, FDA, head of opioid epidemic, uh, one of greatest mistakes of modern medicine. That was from a former FDA head. Uh, FDA whistleblowers. Sue agency claim retaliation over unsafe medical device. Seven, da seven dangerous medications the FDA should never have approved. These are all links that you can uh, search from in this article or uh, read from this article. Um, and there's even this. Remove CDRH director uh, Jeffrey Shuren from FDA. I caramba! <laughs> I love that. Anyway, so should we really trust the FDA's decision decision to blow off research where or results when others say we shouldn't? Um, and they list a whole bunch of people here that 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 uh, say that yes, yes, this cell phone radiation causes cancer. Coincidentally, within the last week or the last week since this was created, there has been much news reported about the Silicon Valley parents freaking out about their own kids' use and exposure to technology. Think of any of that has anything to do with radiation exposure, too? <laughs> Excuse me. Even worse, it's possible that you aren't even aware of the federal legislation that has been passed to install 4G and 5G small cell towers and infrastructure above ground and below all over the country, including in front of your house for the race for 5G in smart cities. Recent reports say that President Trump endorses and loves the 5G, despite the fact that many Americans uh, do not. So much for making America great again, eh? <laughs> Anyway, there's, there's more to the article if you if you care to read it. Like I said, the uh, the, the link will be in the post show blog. But let me just dump it into the chat here for all you that are here listening in live. And uh, there's a whole bunch of other links about stuff that uh, you'll, you'll you'll probably maybe possibly want to go and take a look at. Now uh, I know this this show is called Leftovers, Grim Leftovers. Yeah. And because I do stories from whenever the end of my list is, at this point it's still several months ago, that that number that 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 gap will close the the further along uh, I go doing this show. But I came across this one story today that I thought I would share with you, because it seems to me, um, well, it seems like something I just wanted to share. It's not really all that important, particularly to the the main portion of the population uh, but I thought it was important enough for me uh, that it that it, it struck a little nerve in my brain and it's it's on the intercept by Grant Glenn Greenwald and uh, this came out just today it's just a brand new article so it's not really a leftover <laughs> hope you don't mind something fresh some some fresh fresh hot 
hot buns uh, with, with, with your leftovers. <laughs> there you go. A Texas elementary school speech pathologist refused to sign a pro-Israel oath, now mandatory in many states. Got that? Pro-Israel oath, now mandatory in many states. So, she lost her job. Yeah, that's what happened. A children's speech pathologist who has worked for the last nine years with developmentally disabled, autistic, and speech-impaired elementary school students in Austin, Texas, has been... Austin, Texas. Oh, yeah, go Israel. Uh, Austin, Texas has been told that she can no longer work with the public school district after she refused to sign an oath vowing that she does not and will not engage in a boycott of Israel or otherwise take any action that is intended to inflict economic harm on that foreign nation. That one. Not other ones. Just that one. A lawsuit on her behalf was filed early Monday morning. Today? Just today, baby? I guess. Anyway, in a federal court in the Western District of Texas, alleging the violation of her First Amendment right of free speech. Uh, the child language specialist, Bahia Amwai, uh, probably of, you know, some Arab descent there, uh, is a citizen, U.S. citizen, who received a master's de degree in speech pathology in 1999 and, since then, has, a special, has specialized in evaluations for young children with language difficulties. Amwahi was born in Austria and has lived in the U.S. for the last 30 years, fluently speaks three languages, English, German, and Arabic, and has four U.S.-born children of her own. And why he began working in 2009 on a contract basis with the Pflugerville Independent School District, which includes Austin, to provide assessment and support for children from countries uh, growing Arabic-speaking immigrant, immigrant community, <laughs> the children with whom she has worked uh, span the ages of 3 to 11. Ever since her work for the school district began in 2009, her contract was renewed each year with no controversy or problem. But this year, all of that changed. On August 13th, the school district once again offered to extend her contract for another year by sending her essentially the same contract and set of certifi certifications she has uh, received and signed at the end of each year since 2009. She was all prepared, ready, ready to go. She was going to sign that contract renewal until she noticed one new and extremely significant addition. A certification she was required to sign pledging that she does not currently boycott Israel, that she will not boycott Israel during the term of the contract, and that she will refrain from any action that is intended to penalize, inflict economic harm on, or limit commercial relations with Israel, or with a person or entity doing business in Israel, or in an Israeli-controlled territory. Flugerville, yes indeed, Kate. Um, <laughs> the language of the affirmation, I'm why it was told, uh, she must sign reads like an Orwellian or McCarthyite self parody. The, the, the classical, or the classic, not classical, uh, politi political loyalty oath that every American should instinctively shudder upon reading. And here it is. Pursuant to Section 2270.001 of Texas Government Code, the contractor affirms that it does not currently boycott Israel and will not boycott Israel during the term of the contract. Pursuant to section 2270.001, that's the same section, I don't know why he separated that out, of Texas government code. Boycott Israel refu means refusing to deal with, terminating business activities with, or otherwise taking any action that is intended to penalize, inflict economic harm on, or limit commercial relations with, with specifically with Israel. 
specifically or with a person or entity doing business in Israel or in Israeli controlled territory but does not include an action made for ordinary per business purposes and company means for profit sole proprietorship organization association corporation partnership joint venture limited partnership limited liability partnership or any limited liability company including a wholly owned subsidiary subsidiary majority owned subsidiary uh, parent company or affiliate of those entities or or businesses associations that exist to make a profit <laughs> yeah and then you have to sign that initial that anyway uh, anyway the, the language would bar a, a maui not only from refraining from buying goods from companies located within israel but also from any Israeli companies operating in the occupied West Bank in an Israeli controlled territory. The oath given to Amawi would likely also prohibit her even from advocating such a boycott, given that speech could be seen as intended to penalize, inflict the economic harm, or limit commercial relations with Israel. So if you speak out, against the Israelis in any manner. Well, you are just screwed. Whatever one's own views are, uh, boycotting Israel to stop its occupation is a global political movement modeled on the 1980s boycott aimed at South Africa that helped end the country's system of racial apartheid. It has been because it has become so mainstream that nearly two that mainstream that the two newly elected members of U.S. Congress export explicitly support it, while boycotting Israeli companies in the occupied terries, territories lose my brain here, has long been advocated in the mainstream ventures uh, by Jewish Zionist groups such as Peace Now and the Jewish American Zionist writer Peter Beinart. This required certification about Israel was the only one in in contract sent to Awami Amawi uh, that pertained to political opinions and activism. There were no similar clauses relating to children, such as a vow to advocate for pedophiles or child abusers. Nor were there any required political oaths uh, that that pertained to the country in which she was a citizen and where she lives and works in the United States. I mean, let me let me let me jump down here because this this goes on quite a quite a uh, quite quite a way here. Uh, you, you know, Glenn Greenwald is a very very uh, verbose kind of guy, um, and he go and he does go on, um, uh, just I I don't know. He he must be he must, maybe he can't sleep at night. I don't know. Uh, and, I, and so anyway, I'm just gonna give you the, the link to the article because. Like I said, it's it's many 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 pages. Um, look at all this stuff people are posting in there. All right, so there there it is. Um, I, I've read through the majority of this article. I haven't gone completely through it, but I do agree with Glenn Greenwald on this on this issue, and and it, it is absolutely insane to have oh, what what does Israel have to do with anything? <laughs> What the frick is going on here? <laughs> uh, why? I mean, this person, she, she's a, a teacher, a, a, a helper of children that are having trouble. What, what, what is going on with this? Why, why is this in there? This makes no sense for, for the particular job that she has or anybody else that, that would have a similar type job. Exactly, Kate. Brevity is not one of Greenwald's traits. <laughs> uh, so, and and I don't know how many other kind of companies or, or places of work. Maybe it's just government places of work where you're not allowed to, to, to boycott Israel, or you're not, you have to sign an oath saying you won't, whether you actually do or not. It's a whole different story. But um, to me, this is lunacy. This is absolute lunacy. Um, <laughs> oh, let me let me see what's going on here in the chat. I, I think I'm missing some kind of stuff here. Uh, I I I don't really know, but 
I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm reading, I'm, I'm trying to figure something out. I don't know, I'm going to kill a duck. Oh, I missed it. All right. Um, anyway, <laughs> in case you're unaware, if you're listening to this, this podcast later somewhere, and you hear that I'm going to kill a duck, I'm not really going to kill a duck. We have, we have a little game, Duck Hunt, in the chat, where you can kill a duck. <laughs> anyway, I, I think I'll wrap it up there. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm speechless over this 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 kind of thing, which is why I had to share with you a new story from today about what's going on there. It, 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 <laughs> I, just, I just can't... I, I mean, there's, there's lines that you can create and step over, but this one, this one... Is way way over the line. I just I just I just don't know. I just don't know. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, it, it's been good doing the show. I, I enjoy doing the show again. I, I may increase my my time doing the show as 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 we go on, but a lot of it won't will wind up not being leftovers after a short period. So uh, I named it leftovers for that reason. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, as far as that goes, I, I guess I could just keep it called leftovers, even if it becomes new show, new stories, just because you know leftovers are tasty, as people have stated. Anyway, tomorrow at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern here on RLM Radio, uh, you got you got Flash somebody doing his show in a perfect world, and possibly co-hosted by Vinny or Rob Works or who knows who. Sometimes people join him on the show and they have a good discussion on various things. Um, and, and then on Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern is Grammy's show, Grammy's Rocket Chair, uh, which she did. It's a two-hour program, so you tune in for that, and she'll she'll get you laughing and, and give you some information about stuff for your health and your garden and who knows what all. She, she talks about all kinds of things. She covers some funny stories, and she does it all in, in, a, in a very nice manner that you will enjoy listening to. 11 p.m. Eastern on Friday night will be myself and Moose Girl uh, with the Freakers Ball, which is a three-hour program we do. We've been doing for quite the number of years now. Um, <laughs> so so tune in for the Freakers Ball, which is not only live here on RLM Radio, but we also have a live video broadcast, which you can find on Channel 1 on Real Liberty Media or on Vaughn Live Vaughn.live.tv, is that it? No, vonlive.tv slash Real Liberty Media. So it's there. Um, then on Saturday is is uh, Flash, once again, Flash Somebody, doing his show, The Dork Table, which started off as kind of a round table type of thing. And um, so he, he sometimes does the show solo. He's been doing a few solo shows, does very well at that. But, uh, you know, again, sometime co-hosts will jump on with him. I'm on Sunday mornings there here on RLM Radio playing the blues for three hours from from, from noon Eastern until 3 p.m. I play all kinds of blues. It's a great time. I play everything that, that, I, that you can imagine if you like the blues. And during that, we play trivia here in the chat. So if you're a fan of the trivia, come on over, RLM, reallibertymedia.com, uh, and jump into the chat. Or if you have an IRC client, just connect to irc.freenode.net and connect to pound pound Real Liberty Media. Then at 3 p.m. Eastern is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up his big old can of whoop ass and giving you some information. That's right, and lots of good information about various topics. And uh, Hal, Hal does a great show, and you should tune in to that if you want to learn something new about something. <laughs> you may get insulted a time or two listening to the show, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about that at all. Just let it roll off your back. Now, you may have noticed that there was no show on Thursday. Why is that, do you say? No Thursday show. Somebody may want to step up and do a show on Thursday at some point. Also, all the other times throughout the day that there's no shows on, you could always, if, if somebody wants to do a show, um, let me know. I'll set you up to do a show uh, about stuff, and, and uh, it takes some dedication takes some work. Um, some people get nervous doing a show, but there's no reason. You know, it's it's really easy. You just come on here and start yapping about whatever it is that you've got to talk about, things that uh, excite you or anger you or make 
you know, make you laugh, what, whatever it may be. So if you want to do a show on here on RLM Radio, we'd love to have you. And uh, if you talk about stuff that, uh, that, that you like and of honesty and from your heart, then people are going to listen. You know, that, that's pretty much all there, there is to that. Um, anyway, I think that's it. Thank you all for tuning in. It's been a, it's been a fun time. I've enjoyed uh, the show. And hopefully you all have too. I'll talk to you later. Have a great week. Peace.